Okay, I'm going to start the video. Um, I'm preparing my very old North Face patrol pack for a jaunt. Um, I'm starting out zoomed into the pack. And the reason being, there's all kinds of uh, attachments and straps and things on the pack um, that are black with a on black fabric. And so I'm zoom in and just have a look at that. And now I'm going to bring it back out. A little bit of squeaking by the tripod. And Okay. Alrighty. Um, and this video isn't intended to instruct how you should pack the pack. Basically look at the features and uh, some decision ma making of what I want to use in this pack because the next jaunt I think will involve train travel. So generally speaking this is an internal frame pack. Of course you can't see a frame uh, on the back and the frame stays are in, inside. It's a top loader which is self-explanatory. Uh, you can load the stuff in the, in the top. There's no zipper panel access to get in from the sides or anything. It's a, a patrol pack. It's kind of a search and rescue theme. Um, and basically you have this top cap. Hold stuff. Here's a pot on the back. In which, in these spots I would put things that I'm going to need most often and most uh, sooner than other stuff. Uh, my general rule on a small pack, I like to have ways to attach things to the outside of the pack. And these loops here are called daisy chain. And I know they're black. I'm going to stick my fingers in there so you can just get an idea. And here's a couple of, of straps for attaching ice axes and things to the pack. Same with the top of the pack. Um, daisy chain and I know it's black on black I'll stick my fingers so we have a bunch of loops to stick things on the outside of the pack some more about the pack features inside the pack there's a place to put a water bladder right here's a hole and here's the port where the hose will come out and you attach your water hose to your shoulder harness so you can drink the water while you're while you're hiking on my larger size patrol pack, this top cap is removable. On this small, smaller pack, it is not. Same with this pod. On my larger pack, it is removable. The smaller pack, it is not. I don't know if you'll see this. Um, in, under this pod, it's a place to put cross-country skis and you can't see it, but right here there's a, there's a Velcro strap for attaching the skis. And again, to attach things on the outside of the pack, um, these compression straps are for if the pack is underloaded and you can just cinch the weight down closer to your center of gravity. I'll go quickly on this. There are, here are some loops for attaching a sled behind you one on each side. At the bottom we have loops that you would put your ice axe or ice tools in. Uh, this would be the pick and the adds end of the end and the handle would attach up here with these straps. And I know I'm going kind of fast. Um, the shoulder harness on this smaller pack is not adjustable for the torso, torso length adjustment in there. It's fixed. I know it's, everything's black. Um, here on the shoulder harness, there's a sternum strap, and it slides up and down, and you can tighten the shoulder harness in the center, closer or farther apart, however it fits your shoulders best. 
I'm going to pull some things out of the pack and just mention about loading a top loader pack. Um, no, nothing in here is compressed right now. I haven't compressed the stuff. And you can pack the pack stacked with your contents stacked. And the first things you want, of course, would be at the top of the pack. And you would have to unload the pack to get to the things in the bottom. <clears throat> the way I have the pack set up right now, my sleeping bag is rolled up similar to this bivy sack. And so it is vertical in the pack. And I don't need to unload the pack to get to my sleeping bag. I can just pull it out. Same with my rain jacket. It's rolled up like a tube. I don't have to unload contents of the pack to get to my rain jacket. And in a few minutes, we may be thankful for that. And my sleeping bag, it's the same. It's stuck in there. And this is just to show you how you can load the pack if you wanted to. Keep in mind, here's a stuff sack. The sleeping bag will go in. The sleeping bag will compress to about half its size and go in this stuff sack. On the side of the pack, probably I will have, this is the bivouac bag. I may take a tent. I don't know how I'll put the tent. If I'll fold it up flat, put it in the pack along, it'll be closest to my back, fold it flat in, or have it rolled and attached in the compression, the compression straps. And also in the pack water bottle, another water bottle. This is a hobo stove that I made. Hobo stove, it's just a, they call it a hobo stove. I can put wood in it and burn. My cup sits on top. Also, this is a little alcohol stove that I made um, that may want to stay in the cup. Little alcohol stove I made that can go inside the hobo stove if I want to cook with alcohol. And so it's the hobo stove. Um, maybe I may be taking the, the GI canteen cup stove. I don't know. And of course, I mentioned uh, this is an internal frame pack. These are the frame stays. They go down into their little sleeves and attach with Velcro. Let's see if I can get this tube out. Or show it. This sleeve that is red, it's for an avalanche probe to poke down an avalanche and find people. So keep in mind with the patrol pack, it's very search and rescue oriented pack. Um, this pack is, uh, I think, 1,990 uh, cubic inches, which is a 30 liter pack. Um, now keep in mind when you shop for a pack that uh, the capacity may be a little misleading, the published capacity, because of the way they measure. 30 liter pack doesn't mean that you can put 30 one liter bottles in it. Uh, they won't fit. They fill the pack with something small, some kind of little beads or, or so, and they empty the pack and measure the volume of all these beads. Of course, the beads will fill up every little nook and cranny in the pack, and so uh, you may not be able to fill up every little nook and cranny with your contents. Soft goods, you can really stuff them in there, such as a sleeping bag. You can really cram things in there and take up that space and get the most of the volume in your pack. And I know I'm going kind of fast, folks. I'm racing the bugs and the rain. Okay. And of course, the, t the top loader, it has a cinch cinch it close and it has a buckle with a strap and 
Besides closing the pack, the strap serves another function because it pulls, I don't know if you can see this, it's going to pull the top of the pack away from the back of your head. Okay, and there's a couple more things on the pack for attaching things. I, <clears throat> I won't go into that. Um, very ski oriented and whatnot. Um, Next, I'll go into some more about ergonomics. I mentioned the shoulder harness. On the shoulder harness, and it's hard to see, I'll stick my hand in there because black fabric on black fabric. You'll see another strap, and what that does, it's called a load activator, and it will pull the pack towards you at your shoulder harness. So you can balance the pack. You can tilt the pack towards you and, and get that load balance how you like it. Also on the waist belt, again black fabric on black fabric, it's kind of hard to see. Here's another strap, that's also a load activator that you pull or loosen to your liking to pull the pack to your body for your balance. And basically, I went through that stuff pretty quick. I know, um, what can I say about loading the pack? Um, decisions to make. I have some stuff in the pack. I have in here, I think maybe both a towel and a chamois, um, a pair of gloves. And so, things I would need often and, and soonest. Top. I don't remember. Oh, here's a bag with other stuff sacks. I'll mention stuff sacks. With sleeping bags, I would rather take a larger stuff sack that's easier to get the sleeping bag in and then compress the stuff sack than start out with a very small stuff sack that's very uh, difficult to get the sleeping bag in. That's just my preference for the stuff sacks. Um, the water containers, I, one of them in here is a stainless steel. I can actually heat water in the bottle. This, this one is Lexan plastic. I don't think we'll be throwing this in the fire. And so, uh, my main theme and consideration in this pack and how, to, how I want to load it and what to take is that this will involve train travel. And so, this pack will be uh, basically in front of my legs part of the trip and up in an overhead compartment. So I'm limited by the size and so it rules out a very large pack and it even rules out how much stuff I can put on the strap on the outside of the pack. And like I say, with a smaller pack I want attachments on the outside of the pack to attach things so I can get more volume than the stated volume of the pack. And of course you may look like a walk-in yard sale, but um, you know, that's how you do it when you have a smaller pack. Options with this thing, I could strap a tent right on the top. Like I say, here's daisy chains. I can put straps in and there's two rows of them. I can strap things up on the top. Of course, the compression straps, I can I can put things under the compression straps and strap them in the side. Probably my bivy sack will go right here, in the compression strap. Uh, maybe the tent on this side. Um, I don't know. Maybe outerwear. Uh, you saw me remove my rain jacket. Um, rain jacket, of course, uh, won't be affected by the weather. I can strap outerwear on the outside of the pack and not worry about it. And so that's a real quick rundown on a 20-year-old North Face Patrol pack. And it is one of my favorites. It's a pack I highly recommend, both for size, um, because of its compactness, and all that it offers for attaching things to the pack. Also, under this pod where I said it's meant for the cross-country skis, I can roll up a jacket, whatever, and put underneath the pod, and, and I do. 
That's kind of my norm. So that was a quickie. This is the North Face uh, Patrol Pack. This, this thing is uh, 20 years old. Um, I haven't used it in a while. It's a little dirty. Of course, you can maybe tell that it missed out on spring cleaning and the spring before that, and maybe the spring before that. Okay, from Lat 44 Outdoors, we're at 44 degrees, 31 minutes north latitude. Thanks, viewers and subscribers. I hope you appreciate the info uh, about this patrol pack and what I look for in the smaller packs. Thanks again for watching, and I think we beat the rain. Thanks much.